Yeah, it's a smart move. Head into stay, get as far north as you can. Keep a low profile, escape all that attention. Only now, of course, you've gone and got our attention. What you did dishonors all cops. I'm trying to find my husband. You are a private investigator, mm -hmm. is that correct? Who are you? Me and you, boss, if you play your cards right. With uh, Thomas Jane on the extra mile to chat about Truffle, which actually um, first premiered in Australia and um, following the success, now we'll be getting it here on Super Channel. So um, I want to ask you, Thomas, um, you know, you star and you're also an executive producer of the show. Um, so I'm kind of curious, what kind of initially drew you into the role uh, for Ted? Uh, wounded um, men, men who have been wounded by life. <laughs> and are trying to struggle, uh, struggling to find their way out um, to a sense of uh, peace, you know? Uh, um, so that's certainly what, what Ted, um, uh, what he gives. And, and, and it's just like, oh, always, it's like right up my alley. Mm -hmm. Find a character who's wounded, um, misunderstood, and, um, good at his job, and uh and um and how is he going to sort of dig himself out of you know whatever whatever hole that uh in this case Candace Fox has dug for him <laughs> the writer of the novels yes uh, Candace um, Fox terrific terrific books yeah I actually um was kind of curious um you know it, obviously it's based on um Candace Fox novel Crimson Lake um did you actually read the book prior to uh doing the show and would you say uh there's any like significant changes or any additions that kind of really stood out to you absolutely read the book that's what got me interested in the first place and um we we try to stay true obviously to the characters but then we also, you know, um, some of the storylines get reimagined, um, which, you know, it's a tricky situation, right? You want to stay true to the characters, but you also want to keep it interesting and surprising for the audience who is familiar with the books. So we do, we try to do a little bit of both. It's a dance. I mean, you know, obviously the series is um, set in um, Australia. Um, have you been to Australia before prior to filming the show? And like, how would you say that kind of contributed to the whole um, atmosphere and the storytelling? I mean, obviously yeah. the whole like crocodiles and everything, but um, you know, kind of <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> no, that's pretty much it. I, I had been to the Gold Coast uh, to make a movie uh, with John Cusack, actually um about 10 years prior so i kind of knew what i was getting into the books are very descriptive uh and they they do a great job of describing sort of northern queensland and that life um it's different it's a different reality than what most people are used to e even australians uh other australians w will be unfamiliar with the uh northern queensland lifestyle you know because australia is a fairly large place there's a lot going on but the northern queensland um is particularly uh different it's kind of it's the kind of place where you can go to disappear if you just mm -hmm. one of the last places on earth that you can go and er erase your footprint from from the world and disappear so you meet some interesting characters up there would you do you have any like memorable um experiences or just kind of uh from filming just in um australia like especially in such like a distinct um environment it's this is how distinct it is when you show up uh to shoot at a location before the crew shows up you'll bring in a snake wrangler sometimes two of them and their job is to go th 
through the perimeter of the area you'll be shooting in and make sure that all the snakes are out of there. And if they find a snake, they'll bag it and they'll take it off the perimeter. Um, so I don't think there was a time when the snake wranglers showed up and didn't find a snake. Uh, so they were <laughs> useful. Yeah, they turned out to be quite useful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I personally don't know what I would have done in that situation. I'm not really a biggest fan of snakes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously, we kind of got to look at the first few episodes and, um, you know, what it kind of looks like is um, the, it looks like it does deals with some themes of like maybe like redemption and maybe something like justice. Um, how do you think the audience would kind of like be able to or like, how do you how do you think these themes resonate with the audience and like what kind of message do you want the viewers to kind of take away essentially from the show? The theme of redemption, you know, is really, I, I think, the what what kept us coming back and kept us interested in telling this story, you know, for both characters, uh, Amanda and Ted and how seemingly un redeemable acts or unredeemable events in someone's life is there a way to crawl your way back to some kind of redemption that's what um that's what i love about the story you know and it kind of keeps me coming back to re to revisit um ted it's a tough part to play um but it's worth it in the end yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to kind of see um how that plays with the rest of the series. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, you have a diverse uh, career in um roles, and you played um, you know, you you like, how would you say your kind of experience in um the past projects, like let's say the Expanse or anything else you've worked on, kind of influenced um your performance? Oh, well, you're always learning, you know. There's always more to learn. Uh, with the Expanse, I directed one of the episodes of season five and used that to direct a couple of the episodes in season two for Trapo. Uh, really learned a lot, had a very um, rewarding experience uh, directing the show. So I suppose um, that would probably be the biggest connection to other, other shows that I've done and bringing... Uh, the knowledge that I've learned on these other shows into Trapo, you know, as a producer and a director, uh, that, that helped quite a bit. And, um, I learned a hell of a lot, you know? So when I, when we go into season three, I, I expect from myself, um, a higher standard of, uh, quality of work. Actually, kind of got, uh, touching a little base on that. What would you say has been like the most rewarding aspect of working on Tropo as um, an actor and a uh, producer, an executive producer? Well, you know, it's always rewarding to um, cre create the characters and 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 lay them down uh, in the best way that we can um, with the with within the limitations that we have to to. Every show has limitations, but the challenge becomes, can you say what you want to say or the essence of this character or this story in the, uh, in the time that, that we're allowed, that we're allotted to, to say it in. Hmm. So that's, if, if you can get the closer you can get to that, the more rewarding it is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Obviously, you know, there's um, a lot of interesting things to kind of look forward to, but is there, was there anything that you are um, able to uh, share with us on um, what we can kind of expect on season two and how your character uh, Ted's journey will kind of evolve? Well, I think he is, you know, season one, he's a hot mess. <laughs> season two, Ted's trying to get his shit together. He needs to uh, buckle up. He needs to you know get his 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 wife uh back he needs to get his kid back or at least in put himself in his kid's life um in a way that he hasn't been able to do in, in season one so 
we get to focus on the family dynamic with Ted, you know, in, in season two. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, no, I'm really excited to see a little bit more about like Ted's background and, um, you know, just learn more about uh, how he came to be. Um, so, I mean, you know, I think my final question would be, um, you know, we're, so we're all about going the extra mile here. And I'm kind of curious, you know, Thomas, how do you go the extra mile, um, whether it be in acting, producing, or just in your day-to-day -day life? What does it mean to go the extra mile? You know, um, there's a part of your brain uh, that actually grows the more you do things that you don't want to do, right? And so every time you accomplish something that you don't want to do, your brain is like, I don't want to get up. I don't want to um you know wake up an, an hour earlier or i don't want to go to the gym um i don't want to take that walk <laughs> but when you turn that part off and do it anyway there's a part of your brain that actually gets stronger so if you're going the extra mile every time you go the extra mile in whatever capacity um or, or whatever phase of life that you're in at that moment you're actually strengthening uh, the part of your brain that uh, you know that 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 can will things into existence. So, no matter what it is, so that that I guess what I'm trying to say is the the little things that we push ourselves to do every day actually contribute to getting the big stuff done. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. That's a great answer. <laughs> right on. Well, uh, listen, uh, that's pretty much everything for me. Um, thanks so much for your time, Tom.